For this project we want to investigate what happens to companies when they cooperate or when a company takes over another corporation. Uh, when these two businesses come from different countries, uh, they often have different norms and values, uh, which can easily lead to misunderstandings. We mainly want to explore how these collaborations and uh, takeovers work and what goes right and what goes wrong. Uh, as each company has its own uh, way of working, by uh, studying this we can discover the different cultural values of companies and why these co collaborations and acquisitions work well or not at all. Uh, hey, my wife made some uh, fresh paella, would you like to taste some? No, thank you, I don't like it. No? You already tried it? No, actually, but no, thank you. Oh, okay, no problem. So in this scene uh, you see a Spanish person offering a freshly made uh, pa paella to a Belgian who is eating uh, her fries. Uh, this could be a realistic scenario in a company uh, during the lunch break. Uh, the Belgian is not interested in a paella even though she has never uh, tasted it. This sh shows that um, this person is close-minded and does not want to try new things from uh, other cultures. There are five rules you can use to engage in conversation with a close-minded colleague. First of all, try to never get personal. You should uh, never take anything they do or say personally. Then the second rule is to always stay positive. Uh, staying positive, to, positive to, through uh, difficult times at work uh, will reveal to you the kind of co-workers you should consider worthy as well as the uh, unworthy ones you should avoid in the future. Then uh, rule 3 talks about the fact that it uh, is normal to walk away from a certain situation. Uh, if a colleague is uh, purposely trying to harm uh, you verbally and, never, and you never intended to debate with uh, them, then you can simply say uh, no, uh, no thank you, I'm leaving uh, and just walk out of the door. Then the second last rule uh, says you always have to uh, stay true to yourself. So uh, stay true to yourself and uh, your own beliefs and let them know exactly how uh, you feel personally. And the fifth and last rule is about keeping your personal life away uh, from work. work. Close-minded people might try to make um, you look small and weak, but uh, you should not let uh, them get away with this. Uh, a good way is to keep your personal life private to avoid any s such issues uh, coming up in the future. Hey, yes. Is everything still going as planned? Yes, uh, everything uh, is going as planned. Thank you. Great. Oh. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to explain the sketch a bit more and tell you what exactly happened in the sketch. So the Belgian guy uh, did a hand signal that was considered rude in the Iranian culture. In the Iranian culture, putting your thumb up is equivalent to the middle finger. This is a frequently happening misunderstanding that is innocent in our culture, but very rude in the Iranian culture. This is because of different norms in different cultures. Norms are the unwritten rules of society. And to be more specific, this situation has to do with the folkways of the Iranian culture. Now, folkways are the traditional behavior of a society and some major categories in folkways are hand signals, etiquettes, greeting, etc. To give you some examples of these categories in folkways, we first have hand signals. Uh, the OK sign in Brazil is a very offensive gesture to use, uh, just like using your left hand to do things in Middle Eastern countries. In terms of etiquette, uh, in Saudi Arabia it is normal to burp after your meal, and it's sometimes even considered rude when you don't burp. Or in Asia, slurping your food is totally normal. Now, greeting in countries like Japan, uh, when you greet, you bow. Or in countries, uh, in more continents like Asia and Africa, you greet elders before younger people. Now, these are some examples of things that can go wrong if two different cultures come together. And also some things to avoid. And so especially with mergers and acquisition, as acquisitions, it is crucial to do your research about different cultures to avoid situations like the one that happened here. 
um, both I've seen you make some mistakes with the budget. Why are you criticizing me? Do this after your work hours. You know what? Fuck it. So the video you actually just saw was an example of what happens when one company wants to merge with another company and they just have two different cultures. So in this video, I was playing a German employee and Jarno was playing an American boss and I actually quit because their working culture didn't match with mine. So first off, I want to talk a bit more about those two cultures and then after I'm going to talk about the do's and don'ts when you want to merge with another company from another country who has another culture. So first off, Germans are very direct. They actually dare to say no. They really talk with their upper, with their higher ups about if there's a problem with, or if something is going on. And they only work when they are actually clocked in. So they don't really work after working hours, which is basic, which is also normal for us. But Americans are a bit different because they really need their job to survive. And I talk more about like middle class people like us and not about the really rich ones. Um, so they are really... They really have to work after hours if they really want to keep their job also because their insurance is connected with their work most of the time so if they lose their job they also lose their insurance and if they then get sick then they have to pay a lot of money and most of the time they are in a lot of debt so it's really hard for them to actually say something to their upper boss so it's more of a fear that they have and that's a big difference with germans so when an american doesn't really do their market research about germany then you could actually have this conversation where a German employee quits just because the working culture doesn't match with them. So now I want to talk a bit more about the do's and don'ts when merging with another company. So first off, you need to analyze and just respect that there is another culture present in that company and that it isn't going to be the same as you already know. That's one of the most important things to do and just inform yourself watch videos, know their history, and definitely know what actually offends them because it can be really easy for us to offend someone with another, with another culture because um, they have different meanings for a couple of expressions and we have different kind of meanings for them. So really just inform yourself and know what you are talking about. Also, when you are going to do a reorganization of the company and you wanna take on new talent, just have an open communication. It's really important that every employee knows what's actually going on and how they can actually uh, go um, uh, take on that change that go that's going to happen. So just be have an open, um, open communication. Another very important point is keep the same benefits that they already have. Don't go changing anything. Just keep the benefits that the employees already have. And if you want to add more, that's good, but you don't have to, but just keep the ones that they already have. And also be good informed with the new legislation with that country. Hello, Disney. Hello, Pixar. That in your hand looks very interesting. Can I have it? Of course you can. Thank you. It looks very interesting too. Can I hold it? Yeah. Of course. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So what if an acquisition went well? For a deal to be successful, acquirers must prioritize developing a new corporate culture with a set of shared values, beliefs and assumptions. In addition, companies should have a clean merger integration plan. Developing an integration agenda early on allows the acquirer to understand the culture of the other organization and plan accordingly. Because integration planning after closing often leads to neg negative results. The executive should develop a plan in advance based on what type of culture they envision for the combined businesses. While cultural integration is difficult to measure, it should become clear within a year whether people within the organization continue to think in pre-deal circumstances or not. A coherent decision-making process is needed to be successful. And here some, are some success factors you should remember. Clear and common goals plus the part to achieve them are very important. Make also a concerted effort to have people from different organizations work together on a daily basis in joint team. Create a feeling among the employees that we and them is no longer in place. We from now on are the joint teams. In concrete terms is what I want to say is that cultural integration is very necessary as well as pro 
process integration. Stakeholder alignment is the necessary thing to do when you want to have a clear goal and a path to achieve them. So these things you need to do uh, in order to make an acquisition work. So why was the merger between Disney and Pixar so successful? Well, it actually had a very simple reason. There was no culture to adjust to because the two uh, businesses were based in the USA. The only thing they had to make sure they did was cultural integration, so they had shared beliefs and so on. Um, process integration, they did this very well by exchanging technology and um, merchandise strategies and shareholder alignment in order to um, have a clear goal and a path to achieve them, as I already mentioned before. So these are the things I really want to stress out because um, a merger is often successful because there is no cultural difference. But that's not, it's not impossible when there is cultural difference.